How's it going, guys? So a very easy question for pharmacology slash family medicine. We'll tell you exactly what you need to know, not waste our fucking time. This is not going to be an overly dramatic or lengthy clip. So before we get started, I will be my frequent asshole. Tell you to subscribe my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. The link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now let's start the clip. 38-year-old woman, blood pressure 150 on 90 on three separate occasions, BMI is 22. She has history of weekly migraines treated with ibuprofen. Questions just asking the most appropriate pharmacologic therapy for this patient. We make note that her BMI is normal because, of course, weight loss is actually the most important lifestyle change for decreasing blood pressure, not smoking. Okay, it's weight loss. That's an answer on one of the family med forms. Um, when we consider that she does not acutely have a migraine, okay, we make note of that. Uh, because acutely, we use NSAIDs, such as ibuprofen, followed by a tryptin, such as sumatriptan, serotonin receptor agonist. Tryptins are not preventive slash prophylactic, okay? They are abortive only. Uh, we consider, uh, actually, I'll just walk through the answer choices here, rather than just prefacing with this vignette more than I already fucking have. So let's just go through the answer choices. Choice uh, A and B, ACE inhibitor, angiotensin 2 receptor blocker, both wrong answers. Oftentimes, these are used interchangeably on USMLE. So if you see them as two separate answer choices for the same question, it's a good indicator. They're both wrong answers. Now, you should be aware that either an ACE inhibitor such as lisinopril or an ARB such as candesarin, valsarin, uh, they are used first line for uh, improving systolic dysfunction, okay? Decrease afterload, increase ejection fraction. Uh, the more medicine 301 level stuff that's more difficult but high yield for family medicine is that these are the first line agents, either one, uh, used for hypertension in patients who have prediabetes or diabetes or atherosclerotic disease, intermittent claudication, uh, ischemic heart disease with angina, um, carotid stenosis, okay, history of TIA, stroke, retinal artery occlusion, cerebrovascular disease. So any atherosclerosis or any systolic dysfunction uh, or any prediabetes or diabetes, you're going to give an ACE inhibitor or an ARB first line. Otherwise, you're going to give hydrochlorothiazide or dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker, such as nifedipine. As I, as I just fucking said, that's me more medicine 301 level stuff. Um, I've made other clips on it, and I will make future clips. Don't worry, okay? You should also know for family medicine, super high yield, that an ACE inhibitor or an ARB is uh, required if a diabetic has a blood pressure greater than 130 on 80. Okay, not 140 over 90. Hypertension diabetes is greater than 130 on 80. Uh, in addition, you would commence one of these agents if a diabetic has increased creatinine or increased renin or any evidence of proteinuria, okay? And I've even seen uh, an ACE inhibitor commence in a non-diabetic who had proteinuria. Wrong fucking answers. Choice C, alpha blocking agent, wrong answer. Uh, when we consider high yield application for USMLE, I'd say highest yield is uh, BPH, okay? Old dude who uh, can be commenced on tamsulosin and terazosin not required that he has an elevated blood pressure. Of course, pheochromocytoma, we treat with the irreversible alpha-1 blocker, phenoxybenzamine. Apart from those two applications, alpha blockade is not really a classic uh, treatment uh, across NBME material. It more shows up mechanistically in step one in terms of like, you know, decreasing peripheral vascular resistance. How is that going to change heart rate? It would increase heart rate. Uh, more mechanistic stuff on step one level. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, beta blocking agent, is the correct answer. So you need to know that propranolol is the classic prophylaxis for migraines. Okay, we said before ibuprofen and NSAID followed by a tryptin is abortive, but beta blockade is a classic prophylaxis for migraines, especially in the context of hypertension here. You should know that Propranolol, also first line for social phobia, a stage fright. If a patient has history of asthma, you give a benzo instead of propranolol for stage fright. That's just a tangent, but it's on the psych forms, that distinction. Uh, propranolol also used for tachycardia and hyperthyroidism. It decreases peripheral conversion of T4 to T3. Propranolol can be used for prophylaxis for esophageal varices, uh, can be used for akathisia, restlessness in patients who have commenced antipsychotic agents. Uh, propranolol can be used to uh, mitigate risks uh, slash sudden death in patients with hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. By decreasing heart rate, you increase preload. And Hockham is worse if you have uh, less volume in the heart. 
So this is the correct answer, okay? Uh, prophylaxis for migraines, classically beta blocker. I should mention tangentially cluster headache, okay? That's like the, the rhinorrhea, like very buzzy, but like rhinorrhea, uh, tearing, uh, so lacrimation, uh, a guy, 20s, generally in his 20s, who uh, wakes up with 11 out of 10 lancinating pain from his sleep, uh, that's going to be verapamil, non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker as prophylaxis, oxygen to treat, okay, that distinction. Methyl dopa, wrong answer. This is uh, used for hypertension in pregnancy, okay? That's pretty much all you need to know about methyl dopa. It's an alpha blocker, actually. So the fact that they're both listed, I mean, that indicates they're they're wrong and, and they are fucking wrong. Okay. So, but methyl dopa, you say, well, when would I use that? It's just, it can be used for hypertension and pregnancy. Uh, sometimes you'll read other factoids in resources, such as how it can cause a positive Coombs test, et cetera. It's absolute nonsense uh, in terms of yieldness on US simile. It's just hypertension and pregnancy. That's it. Okay. Uh, next answer, oral contraceptive pill wrong. It, it, this is wrong. So you need to know OCPs can actually cause hypertension in young women. All right. So uh, it's one of the most important causes of elevated blood pressure in young women. So if, if a combined oral contraceptive pill is commenced and a girl gets new onset headaches, you absolutely need to be aware that she could have elevated blood pressure. Okay. Very, very important. Wrong fucking answer. So you know the deal. I'm going to continue making more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.